everyone. So I finally had a chance to go and see Eternals again. So I thought might as well record my new thoughts on it because I definitely have a few new things to say that I feel that I missed in my original review. Not as many as I did for Dune because my original review was super long and I think I covered most things, but I definitely have some things to say. I want to start with, though, a question that was submitted in the form. Uh, Star Wars Galactic, who does a Star Wars YouTube channel, which is worth checking out. It's pretty good. Uh, had a question. He said, do you think that Eternals deserves a sequel? Why or why not? And then that's an interesting question because like deserves is tough because do I want a sequel? Like just talking about my personal want, Eternals is my favorite MCU movie. I know I'm definitely in the minority. I loved it. I loved it so much. So I really desperately want an Eternals too. So do I want it? Yes. Does it deserve it? That's another question because I don't think any movie deserves anything. No movie deserves a sequel. In Hollywood, there's no deserving. It's just whether or not the movie gets one. Hollywood's a business. So it's hard to say deserves because I don't think any movie really deserves anything, if that makes sense. But then the question becomes, do I think Eternals will get a sequel? And if that's what you meant by deserves, that's an interesting question. Because when you look at the box office, right now Eternals is sitting at, let's look, $339 million worldwide, which is okay. It's okay, but not great. And then when you look at the critics, the reviews are mostly pretty bad. And then the audiences, the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is good, but then you can definitely tell this doesn't have the same word of mouth. This doesn't have the same kind of uh, appeal that Shang-Chi did for general audiences. So will this maybe get a sequel? Under any other studio, I would say probably not because it's not making, it's making money and it'll break even most likely but it's not making as much money as I think they hoped. It's not super successful. It doesn't have the word of mouth. The critics didn't like it. Audiences are kind of mediocre on it, it seems. Uh, So from any other studio, I would say, no, they're not making a sequel to this. But when you look at Marvel Studios and you look at Marvel's track record, Marvel is not reactionary. They don't do things because of fan reactions. They have a plan years in advance and they do that plan. They, uh, They haven't been known to like, oh, the fans hated this, let's immediately move away from it. No, what they do is they refine it, they make it better, and then the fans retroactively go back and they start to like it again. Kevin Feige has proven that he's not reactionary. He has a plan. He's going to stick to his plan no matter what people think. And for that reason, I do actually think Marvel will be making an eternal sequel. And I think the sequel is going to be received a lot better because people know what to expect. And I have a feeling the sequel is going to do a lot better because people know what to expect. And we're not in a pandemic by the time that sequel comes out. So do I want a sequel? Yes. Does the movie deserve a sequel? I don't think no movie deserves anything. I don't. I think deserve is really hard to define in terms of movies. So I don't think it deserves a sequel. But will it get a sequel? Under any other studio, no. But the fact that Marvel has proven to not be reactionary, I have a feeling this Eternal sequel has been in their plans for a long time. So I have a feeling that, yes, Eternals will be getting a sequel. And uh, I'm so happy about that. And I hope that's true. Um, So I hope I answered your question in a satisfying way. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, Getting into my additional thoughts after rewatching this movie, it totally improves on rewatch. Like looking at it objectively, let's talk about some of the flaws that I didn't mention in my original review. Looking at it more from a critical perspective, the deviants are probably the biggest flaw of this movie. Their place in the story is only there to give the eternal something to fight. They're only there for the Marvel action scenes. I understand that criticism. They don't really have much of a narrative purpose. But honestly, it doesn't bother me that much because I love the Marvel fight scenes. I love the Deviant's role in this story. And even though I understand why people don't, I understand why maybe that's a flaw with the movie. I just can't make myself dislike that. I love it. I love the fight scenes with them. I love their role in the story. I do really like them. Um, they Maybe they could have been utilized better. I like the theory someone said or the idea someone said where that they could have evolved and teamed up with the Eternals in the end. I thought that would have been cool. But honestly, that's not what I like to do. I don't like to rewrite the movie to make it more to my liking. I like to judge what is already there instead of judging what could have been there. Um, And I love what is there. What I love about the Eternals is that there's so many routes where they could have gone the easy way. They could have made the villain just bad. They could have made Kingo just join Icarus's team. They could have made the Deviants just evil monsters with nothing else, but they didn't take the easy way. They went the more realistic, complex route. They made Kingo make a different decision. Instead of just following Icarus, Kingo goes, 
I agree with him still, but refuse to fight my family. The deviants gain sentience. They become smarter. They realize we're all the Eternals and Deviants. We're all the same thing. We're all pawns under Arishem. I love that. We have Druig saying the line in the movie too, uh, that we're all pawns. Eternals and Deviants were the same exact thing. I love that they're not just evil monsters. There is more to them. They're growing, they're changing. And it makes the Eternals more morally gray that they're wiping out these creatures that just want to survive, that have sentience, who are smart. And it's so interesting from an ethical perspective too. The Deviants and the Eternals are the same thing. They're not that different. And they're just wiping each other out when they are not dealing with the real problem, which is the Celestial that created them. It's just so interesting. And I love how the writers went the more tough route, but the better route for the story. And that's what I really love about this movie is that they didn't go the easy way out, which so many other movies would have. Another thing that really improved with this movie on rewatch is how much foreshadowing it has and how cohesive the story is. Like it's all set up from the very beginning, all the decisions the characters make in the third act the kind of side they line up on, it's all really foreshadowed. It's all established in the beginning and it's the seeds are all laid in a way that makes it super satisfying to rewatch the movie. Like Richard Madden's face the entire time when uh, the Eternals are investigating and Cersei says, uh, we have to go stop the Celestial or when they go see Ajax and Ajax is first dead. Before the audience knows that, that, uh, that Icarus killed Ajax, Richard Madden's acting the entire time. When you now know it, looking back on it, watching it again, you see it all in his face. He obviously feels guilty. That was really well done. You can read a lot into his expressions. And uh, that was really well done. And then that very first time Ajax communicates with Arishem, that whole conversation doesn't make a lot of sense, the first viewing. But the second viewing, it makes complete sense. And it just gives a whole new meaning to the conversation. And I recommend maybe just find a clip of YouTube alone just watch that conversation with Ajax with Arishem again because it's so layered and it's it makes so much more sense after you've seen the full movie and you see the seeds laid for when she has that conversation with uh with Icarus and she says she's grown attached to the people. You see her uh kind of standing up to Arishem and she doesn't want to do complete this mission. It's just really well done and it's really good foreshadowing and it's a detail you won't notice until the second rewatch. And then throughout the whole movie, Kingo really looking up to Icarus and then everything with Sprite looking up to Icarus and Sprite and Kingo being best friends and then Kingo abandoning Sprite. All that was really well established from the very beginning and they just hint at it over and over so that when their final decisions in the third act happen, they all make sense and you don't really catch any of that until the second rewatch. And uh, it's just really impressive about all the character decisions. They're all foreshadowed. They're all, they all make sense. They don't come out of nowhere. And there's all these details, all this foreshadowing you won't catch the first time that you totally catch the second time. And it makes this story so much better. It makes it more coherent. It flows better on rewatch. Um, it's just really, really good writing. And uh, another thing that really improved on rewatch is Dina's storyline. I found it so impactful and so moving and so touching. It just, I don't know why it didn't hit me the first time, but on rewatch, it really hit me. Like, it's really beautiful. Like, this man, this uh, Gilgamesh, like has been her guardian and he, it's not love, but it's platonic. They, he has protected her for so long and it's, it's really beautiful. And then he dies and she has to learn to protect herself. And it's just really emotional and really strong. And it's just, it makes me want to rewatch the movie again. The character relationships is so good. And then the characters themselves on rewatch, they're even better. They're so well-developed, so compelling and so interesting. One interesting thing is I feel like there's a difference between character arcs and character development. This movie has 10 characters, so not every character goes through an arc. People think an arc needs to happen for every single character. That's not true. A well-developed character doesn't always need an arc. A well-developed character can just be a complex character who stays the same, and there's plenty of well-developed characters in this movie that uh, are really compelling, and a lot of these Eternals are some of my favorite MCU characters ever, and I can honestly just talk for hours breaking down each one. And I did a little bit in my original review because they're so layered, so deep, so complex, so flawed. And, uh, and I really love that. I feel like these characters are a lot deeper than most MCU characters. And wow, I, I think they're just really well done. And I, my goal in this review is not to repeat anything from my original review. So if you want to hear me talk about each individual character, go listen to my original review. But I will say that I loved each of them even more on rewatch. And uh, I love how deep they are and how well done they are. 
Another thing I failed to mention in my original review is the production design of this movie is stunning. All these different time periods, these different locations, I caught on rewatch. They go to so many different places. Visually, I think it's the best Marvel movie. Um, And then the costume design is beautiful too from like all the Eternals costumes just look so cool and so well done and they look awesome in action. So those are some things I failed to mention uh, that I think are great about this movie. Um, One thing this movie, this rewatch of the movie brought up for me is that I think the MCU in the future really needs to establish what the cosmology, what the hierarchy of the MCU is because we've had three shows in the last year, two shows in one movie actually, that have established really powerful beings and we don't really know where they all line up in the hierarchy with each other because okay so we've got in Eternals we've got these Celestials who create universes in Loki we've got this organization outside of time who manages timelines so does that mean that each timeline has Eternals in it and that the TVA is above the Eternals and the Celestials or does that mean that the Celestials create universes and the Celestials are also outside of time and the TVA, uh, the TVA is under the Celestials because the Celestials create the universe the TVA is from. And then where does the Watcher fit into all this? Where does the Watcher fit with the TVA? Is the Watcher just like an alien who sees everything? How does that work? And then we've got questions about, is Ego from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, is he a Celestial? How does that work? Was he lying when he said he was a Celestial? Is Thanos an Eternal? Is Thanos a Deviant? We've got that post credit scene. There's also this theory that I really like that Thanos knew about the Eternals mission and his snap reducing the population was also to prevent the emergence, makes him even more of a hero. But there's just a lot they need to explain. And there's all these different powerful beings that we don't know where they stack against each other. And that's something that's kind of bothering me, especially TVA versus Watcher versus Celestials. I need to know how they line up, who's the most powerful in the universe. And I hope that gets established in the future. And then another thing that really stood out on this rewatch is how great the ending is. I love how it ends on a cliffhanger. I love how we've got the three Eternals. We've got Druig, Makari, and Thena in space looking for more Eternals. And then we've got, I somehow missed it in my original original watch, but Arya Shem just kidnaps. He literally just takes Fastos, Kingo, and Cersei, and they're gone. And then, uh, of course, that's setting up Eternals too, I bet. And I can't wait to see where it goes in the future. And then uh, Sprite is then a human. That's why she wasn't kidnapped. And then Icarus, Gilgamesh, and Ajax are dead. Another thing that really stood out about this movie on rewatch is kind of how it lines up with the themes of phase four. And this has been a central theme of a lot of franchises because it's a pretty easy theme, but I do like how the MCU has been handling it and it's family. I know everyone thinks of Fast and Furious, but Fast and Furious family, the exploration of family is the most surface level a uh, boring explanation of family you can do. I find that phase four MCU is about broken families. And I love how that all, especially in the movies, because you start with Black Widow and it's really about a broken family or family that was never real, really coming back together and finding love for each other again and becoming a family again. Shang-Chi is about how an event happens and how each member of the family reacts and how they really cope with their family being broken, how they split off and how they cope with their shattered family. And then Eternals is about a family who comes back together, but they all have different viewpoints, different perspectives, and we see them break apart in real time. And I just find those phase four, those family themes really, really compelling. And I like how, whether by accident or whether by purpose, uh, the kind of themes all kind of match up and they really come together to be this really big exploration of broken families. And I just love how Eternals lines up with that. And I really love that. And then Eternals, again, it's just, it sticks with you. It's one of those things that you can't stop thinking about. Uh, More than Dune, more than any other movie has in a long time. I love this movie. And it just hit me perfectly. It felt made for me. Like, I love everything about it. I really, really love this movie. And then uh, I just want to see more. I want Disney Plus spinoffs. I want more of these characters. I want Eternals too. I want a prequel series. Show me the Eternals in Greece. Show me Dina in Greece. I want to see Makari and Druid, uh, their relationship. I want to see a show on them. I want a Fasto show. I want him, Fasto's throughout history, how he deals with his technology being used in horrible ways, stuff like that. There's so many interesting things to explore. And then Cersei, I'm sure, will be the lead of Eternals too. I want to see that. I want to see the Eternals in Guardians of the Galaxy. I want to see Black Knight be threaded into uh, 
to the supernatural MCU. Let's see him in Moon Knight. Let's see him in Blade. Let's see him in Werewolf by Night. I really, really love this movie. And uh, this rewatch has just solidified it as my favorite MCU project. I know I'm definitely in the minority and I haven't heard anybody who loved this movie as much as I did, but uh, let me know what you think of this. Have you rewatched Eternals? How has your opinion of the movie changed on rewatch? Let me know in the comments if you're on YouTube. If not, there's a form, there's an email, and there's a voicemail where you can leave your thoughts. All those links are in the description. So please let me know what you think. And um, thank you for listening and have a good day.